And now it's time to welcome our speaker this morning, practitioner Jennifer Livingston, lovingly called Livigen by our practitioners because she's a living gem indeed. <laughs> so please help me to welcome Jennifer Livingston. Good morning, friends. Good morning, Livy <laughs> Jen. Um, and, and I'll just give you an aside. It's amazing how that name has morphed. Because before, when I was Jennifer Williams, I was Willie Jen. And here I am today, Livy Jen. So, hey, it works. I'd like to add my own words of welcome to all of you, and very especially to those who are tuned into this service on our Facebook Live. I want to thank Vance for actually exchanging dates with me for Practitioner Sunday because I was scheduled for December and I was unavoidably going to be out of town. And so I was to be his assistant this morning, so fancy me assisting my own self. But he stepped right in, so thank you Vance for setting the tone for this morning's service. And as always, it is truly a joy for me to share with you from the podium in whatever capacity. I'm asked to do. So friends, today is January 24th, and already the year has gone three weeks, and yet it's still a brand new year, filled with the anticipation of what good will unfold in our lives this year. And for many of us, this is an opportunity to do something new, something we have never done before. Can you think of something you want to do that you have never done before? I am sure you can. So keep that thought in mind, for it is with this feeling of wanting to have a new experience that I have titled my talk this morning, A New Adventure Begins. The idea for this talk came from a reading that was sent to me by my husband, Carl, from the Daily Motivator done by Ralph Marston, and it reads as follows. The adventure begins. What you've worked toward your whole life, you have now attained. Certainly, it's not exactly the way you imagined, but that just makes it even better. Your most authentic priorities have brought you to this moment, to this situation, you have successfully created a unique and valuable set of experiences. Perhaps you're thrilled about how it has gone and what you have done. Or maybe you're disappointed about some of it or much of it. Either way, now is your time to put it all to a newer, higher, more enlightened use. Here you are with the wisdom and experience to live more richly than ever. Consider all the opportunities you've had and smile to yourself because no matter how they all turned out, you are greeted with an ever better opportunity. End of that reading. So now is your chance to move forward with understanding, with purpose, with love, now the adventure begins. And here you are ready to give it everything you have. You see friends, having completed our New Year's spiritual goal setting workshop earlier this year with Reverend, our pastor Reverend John Scott and practitioner Sandra Cooper in which we set our intentions to thrive in 2021 and if you missed the workshop on January 4th, you missed a lot. For us to confidently move forward to have a new experience, we must be willing to do the mental work. Nothing outside there is going to change until we make those changes within. It begins with us, first of all, by changing our thoughts. Science of Mind 101. 
This is the basis of our teaching. Change your thinking, change your life. We cannot expect to have a new adventure if we are still in the old way of thinking and the old way of being. Dr. Ernest Holmes, founder of this teaching, tells us, change the idea of a thing and you will change the thing. And in his book, Creative Mind and Success, he reminds us that the activity of our mind is thought and we are always acting because we are always thinking. He goes on to state, and I quote, at all times we are either drawing things to us or we are pushing them away from us, end quote. In the same vein, author Louise Hay, in her book, Heart Thoughts, states, what is important in this moment is what you are choosing to think and believe and say right now. These words and thoughts will create your future. Your thoughts form the experiences of tomorrow, next week, next month, and next year. End of that quote. Then having put the universe on notice, it always finds ways to provide you with the information that you need. For as I was preparing for this talk, I received a WhatsApp message of a YouTube service by Dr. Barbara Waterhouse, co-founding minister with her husband, Reverend Dr. John B. Waterhouse of Centers for Spiritual Living, Asheville, North Carolina, in which she was talking about clarity and demonstration. And she emphasized the point that we needed to be clear in our thinking as it is just as easy to demonstrate what we do not want in our experience as it is to demonstrate what we do want. I invite you, if you have a chance, to look at that YouTube talk. It has quite a lot of gems in it. So as we embark on our new adventure this year, having been clear about our intention, at those times when the goal may seem to be taking longer than anticipated, or may not be turning out quite the way we had expected, what is it that will sustain us and keep us believing that we can achieve them? At those times, we will also need to have faith that things are working out as it should. And I want to spend some time also examining this matter of faith. You see, many of us come to faith as a last resort. Oftentimes, we will try everything in our conscious power to make things happen. And when all else fails, we have no alternative but to trust. And for some of us, faith comes as a result of a dramatic experience, while for others, it develops gradually. But it doesn't matter, however, how we come to exercise this faith. As practitioners of this teaching, which we all are in studying the science of mind, we know that there is a universal law which receives the direct impress of our thoughts and acts upon it. This energy can only respond by correspondence. And what this means is that the measure of our faith in infinite good is the measure of our capacity to draw from it. So this is why Jesus, the master teacher, said, it is done unto you as you believe. It is according to our faith that life demonstrates through us. We are all familiar with the biblical passage. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, the King James Version states, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The biblical reference in this passage is often quoted as a description of what faith is. 
but what exactly is it? Faith has been recognized as a power throughout the ages, whether it is faith in God, faith in oneself, in one's fellow man, as outlined in this entire chapter of Hebrews 11, it speaks to the idea of faith being embodied by many of the persons written about in the Old Testament, such as Noah, Abram, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, and Moses. It therefore indicates that the idea and acceptance of faith existed even before the teachings of Jesus, the master teacher. In the Science of Mind textbook, Dr. Holmes further expounds on this passage by stating, and I quote, the thought of faith molds the undifferentiated substance and brings into manifestation the thing which was fashioned in the mind. This is how our faith brings our desires to pass, end quote. We are fully aware that this substance is all around us. It's equally and evenly present and available to all. The degree to which we manifest our desires is dependent on our belief and acceptance of the good. In the book, Spiritual Fitness by Caroline Reynolds, um, it's called Spiritual Fitness, How to Live in Truth and Trust, a course we offered here at the temple some time ago. She states, it's on this issue of all pervasiveness, many people stop short. Having dipped their toes into the deep waters of faith, they trust enough to allow an angel to find them a parking space. Yet when it comes to the more serious issues of finances and career, for example, they will prefer to take the matter into their own hands, end quote. She then references the book, A Course in Miracles, one we also did here at the temple. And this tells us that we cannot serve two masters. You can't have a bit of faith for the smaller things in life, but none for the bigger ones. You see, faith is an absolute, and as such, it demands your complete belief in and obedience to a higher power. If you use faith in some area of your life and fear-based reason in others, you will actually negate the effects of your faith throughout. Dr. Holmes, in the book called Can We Talk to God?, says that if we wish to prove that there is a spiritual principle which we may definitely use, let us forego any sense of coercion and become as a little child in receptivity. Let us definitely and consciously accept our good and continue accepting until we experience it. This brings me to a story which was just shared with us by our founding minister, Dr. Elmer Lumsden as we mentioned, her birthday coming up this week. And many of you may have heard it before, but it's worth repeating. And it's the story of a little boy who asked his parents for a bicycle for Christmas. And although he was told by his parents that they couldn't afford it, the little boy kept riding up and down through the house every day on his imaginary bicycle. Vroom, 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 and around and around he went. This went on for weeks. Then just around the time approaching the holidays, a neighbor down the street came by one afternoon, rang the doorbell, and said to the mother, we will be moving house and we are packing, but our son has now outgrown his bicycle, and we were wondering if you would accept it for your son. The mother was so overcome as she accepted the generous gift or oh, the faith of little children. My friends, a good natured flexibility with one's own self and a faith persisting in the face 
of anything which would contradict it is the only way to approach our life and affairs. As we continue to examine this matter of faith within our own experience, we find that there is no one way to describe it. Often it is based on our feelings of hopefulness or hopelessness. You see, we can easily demonstrate our most fervent desires when we are feeling positive, optimistic, and full of joy. And at these times, our faith can sustain us, and it is enough to see us through. But on the other hand, when we are feeling less than hopeful, and we cannot see our way, at times our faith is diluted. Yes, it is precisely at those times when we feel less than hopeful that we are reminded by the teachings of Jesus, as stated in Luke 17 in the King James Version at verse 6, and it says, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamore tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. End of that reading. In my own experience, I have seen where faith has carried me through many challenges, such as when I sustained a broken ankle and was in a cast for eight weeks, having to move around on crutches. As difficult as that was, I had faith in that power which is greater than I am and in my ability to make it through. So I was able to heal much faster than expected and I was out of the cast. So as we exercise our faith and we get ready to take on our new adventure, we must also remember to mindfully plot our path ahead. Last January 2020, in the Science of Mind magazine, this story was shared with us by our then spiritual leader, our past spiritual leader, Dr. Ken Gordon. Um, Spiritual, past spiritual leader for Centers for Spiritual Living. And he shared the story of an exchange he had with a gentleman at a conference he had attended. And he said the gentleman told him this story about a friend he used to ride motorcycles with. The man said that it is common for bikers when on a road trip to take turns going in the lead. However, on one such trip, the gentleman said he noticed his friend never once took the lead. When he asked him about it, the friend apologized and explained that he was diagnosed with early onset dementia and that his problem wasn't that he didn't know where he was going. He was quite aware of where he was and where he was headed, but the issue was he could no longer envision the route to get there. <laughs> Friends, I hope that none of us are in the early stages of dementia. But I share this story with you for you to see the importance of us having a plan and a vision and of where it is we want to get to this year. So while the new year will bring us new adventures, we must be mindful that we are not just going along without a clear direction. And that will happen by committing ourselves to become more deeply grounded in the principles of the science of mind and to apply them in our daily lives. So we must do our spiritual practices. The affirmative prayers, meditation, journaling, and our daily readings these will guide us every step of the way. We should also have our affirmations ready, which we can use in times of need. And let me share with you two such affirmations. I'll read each one once, and then have you repeat after me. So here's the first. No matter the challenges I may encounter this year, I know I can remain in faith. Repeat after me. No matter the challenges, no matter the challenges 
I may encounter this year, I know I can remain in faith. And the second is, I have complete confidence. I do not waver or falter in my faith, for I know that God is the only presence and the only power there is. I'll break it down. I have complete confidence. I, have complete confidence. I do not waver in my faith. For I know that God is the only power and the only presence there is. And if we really believe that, let's hear it again. I have complete confidence. I, have complete confidence. I do not waver or falter in my faith. For I know that God is the only presence and the only power there is. And so it is. So as we contemplate our new adventure this year, here are four questions we should each ask ourselves. And I'd like you to write down your answers, whatever is the first thought that comes to you. Are you ready if you have a piece of paper handy or your program? And those of you online, Write the questions down. You don't have to answer them now, but make a note of them. And our first question is, what would you like to do for yourself this year that you did not do for yourself last year? Have you got that? What would you like to do for yourself this year that you did not do for yourself last year? And the second is, what would you like to let go of this year that you clung to so tightly last year? Again, what would you like to let go of this year that you clung to so tightly last year? And the third, what can you do for yourself this year in a positive way? Again, what can you do for yourself this year in a positive way? And the fourth question is, are you willing to do the work that will bring about these changes? Again, are you willing to do the work that will bring about these changes? My friends, I want to ask you to share the responses. These are for you to take home with you, to ponder some more, and see what comes up for you. Then you can journal about it when doing your spiritual practice. My friends, in closing, if we want to make our New Year's goals come true, and really begin our new adventure, then I'd like to invite you to join me in this reading by Dr. Ernest Holmes. It's an excerpt from a talk entitled, How to Make New Year's Resolutions Come True, and it's from his series, This Thing Called Life, and shared with us by the Science of Mind archives. I'd like to invite you to close your eyes and listen. We can say, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my strength. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I am lifting up my whole thought to the inflow of divine strength and wisdom. And I do believe that today and tomorrow and every day I am in silent partnership with God. I believe that the Spirit goes before me and prepares the way. I believe that every doorway is open, that new opportunities are presenting themselves, new ideas are coming into my mind. 
I am meeting new situations. This whole new year shall be filled with success, love and happiness and friendship, and I expect this to happen. I anticipate it, and I gladly share everything I have with others. Divine intelligence flows through me, causing me to think and to act in such a way as to bring good into my experience and into the experience of everyone with whom I deal. I am one with the infinite presence. I am one with the eternal good. I am in partnership with all the presence there is. And so it is. Let us see ourselves affirming this every day of this new year as our good unfolds and our new adventure begins. Namaste. Namaste.